fall. Let's there's two of them. Let's start with uh, the uh, the freshman rule. Right. You're now allowed to play, I believe, up to four games this year, yep. um, a, as a freshman, and then it will not count towards a year of eligibility if that's all you play. Right. So. I mean, there's a little bit of management involved. There's a little bit of philosophy involved. When do you play them? How do you play them? Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on maybe how that will uh, impact what is a very talented Penn State 2018 class. There's a lot of kids that probably could help Penn State, uh, especially maybe on the defensive side of the ball. What do you see with this rule change where, they could, where James Franklin and Steph, if they want to, could play a freshman for four games this year right. at any time, mm -hmm. and then if they don't play again, they, it's not really counting towards a year of eligibility. Yeah, scheme. I mean, I think the key, Bob, is that you can play game one, game seven, game nine, and game right. 12. It doesn't have to be four in a row. Right. It doesn't have to be four Early. before September. You know, it can be however you want it. Mm -hmm. You can wait to the bowl game, play the first time, and be good to go. So, I don't know. You're always going to have the green group that they're going to play right. no matter what. Right. And the red group is in his stoplight system that, you know, Green obviously means go. Red mm -hmm. means you're not playing this year no matter what. The thing I'm curious about is what do they do with the yellow guys? Yeah. Is it a tryout basis in September when you play opponents that you should pretty much walk over for the most part, mm -hmm. at least three of the four, before you get to Ohio State? Uh, is it a situation where like maybe a guy like Mike Miranda, for example, who late last year right. was maybe close to being better than anything? You know, It would have helped Penn State to have him in the lineup, right. but Penn State didn't want to burn his red shirt. So they held out. I mean, I think that's the question is how do you manage that group of guys moving forward? Yeah, and even a couple of years ago, Will Fries was the guy. Mm -hmm. that I, you know they wanted to play him late in the year when they had those injuries at tackle. Mm -hmm. James talked about him. But they didn't want to just play him for two games and have that count as one of his years. So they wisely, I think, sat him out. To me, I think it's, it's all about you're right about the green lights. Those are the, those are the kids that James and his staff know in August, hey, we want to play these guys. Mm -hmm that they can help us, whether it's on special teams or playing in key reserve roles, or maybe even starting or in a share, uh, timeshare. But there's, I think there's also kids, Greg, that are yellows, and that's, they're kind of on the fence, and we'll see what happens. We'd like to play them, play them but that's not in the plan. Right. The yellows, if they get better as the year goes on and injuries happen, mm -hmm. I think in the second half of the season, I think you could make a strong case for maybe playing them if they're physically and mentally ready. There's also... Um, kind of you can almost use as a carrot a reward for playing in the just to play in the yeah. bowl game hey listen you were great on the practice field this year we know you're ready to play you won't play a lot in the bowl game but at least you're going to get out there and run around uh get on national tv i just think it's a good rule it's a rule that's uh, a, a long time coming and i do think that there's going to be a cluster of yellows that penn state has that um, they're probably going to look to play. And also the way the schedule is set up, Greg, later in the year, I mean, they have the early game against Kent State. Mm -hmm. So that's a prime opportunity to take a look at some kids, whether, uh, whether they're greens or yellows, and maybe for an extended period of time. But also they got Rutgers and Maryland later in the year. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a pretty good chance that Penn State will be up fairly big right. in those games. And that's another chance, I think, where you play these kids and it doesn't maybe affect the outcome of the game, but it really helps them for 2018. Yeah, I think that, you know, just quickly to get into some of the guys this impacts most, I think Judge Culpepper, P.J. Yeah. Mustafer, maybe you want to play just one of those guys and save the other one, right. where you have four opportunities now to find out whether or not, you know, one of those guys is your guy, or maybe they're both your guy, and they're better right. than, you know, your depth out there, so you play them both. The same thing goes for tight end. Mm -hmm. And doesn't it feel like this rule is a couple years late, but may impact? It's a little late for Miles Sanders and the right. freshman year that he had. Right. But it could do the opposite now for Ricky Slade, where Absolutely. maybe if you're not using him like you thought you were going to, you don't burn his first year on campus. Yeah, I think I think about a month into 2016, I think if if James Franklin could have maybe pulled Miles back, and then he would be a redshirt sophomore right. this year, um, I think that might actually. Both sides might have been in favor of that. That's a great point. There's another rule change uh, that recently was adopted involving transfers. Every year Penn State has a kid or two that is either thinking about transferring or doesn't. Um, Corey Bolds this year yeah. uh, did, opted to transfer out of the program. Tommy Stevens thought about mm -hmm. transferring. He's not transferring. But um, the new rule is you could transfer without um, having like a, a – 
a restricted list, in, in other words. What do you think of that rule? Yeah, I think that, you know, Penn State, and unless they'll be as impacted as much as others, they don't take in too many transfers. And usually the guys transferring out aren't, you know, they're not playing at Penn yeah. State, which means they're probably not going to go to somewhere, beside, right. you know, at Penn State's level and play. Now, it's where it comes into effect is a guy like Tommy Stevens, or typically at your quarterback position, yeah. when you have guys that may be able to make the cut, but there's somebody in front of them that's just either a little bit better, a little bit older, and what have you. So, I think it's a good rule for the players. I don't know how much it impacts Penn State long term, yeah. though. But, and just just to be clear, so the rule is, so there, so before this, this rule change or this rule clarification, um, schools could kind of uh, get in the way of a transfer and mm -hmm. say, look, you can't, we'll let you go, but you can't go to these schools. Now schools are no longer moving forward. Mm -hmm. They're not allowed to say to a kid, you, we'll, you, we'll sign off on the transfer. You just can't go to X, Y, or Z. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. You have two business days as a school to put a kid into what they're going to essentially end up calling a national transfer database, for lack of a better, better word. And then schools will be able to contact that kid. They'll have their information, obviously, you know, their film stuff's already out there, but all the things that coaches will need to contact that kid to try to get him to come to their school, they'll have, and the schools have to provide that. And you're right, before you could get in the way of it if you wanted to. Okay, we're 